All right, hello, good morning, everyone. We're uh, very pleased to be here today. As Rose said, my name is Frances Berger. I'm the manager of performance and financial systems at Eversource Energy. I'm here with my colleague, Joe Canina, and we're really pleased to, um, to be able to, to be here with you today and, uh, and tell you a little bit about our journey with DI. Uh, so our agenda today, we're going to tell you about how we're leveraging the system. We're going to focus on our decision-making process at Eversource Energy. We're going, to t we're going to start out by telling you a little bit about our company, uh, about our approach to goal and strategy, and how we're leveraging DI to make those decisions. We're also going to talk to you about our journey with DI. So we're, we're a fairly new customer. We went live this January. So, uh, so we're still new at it and um, you know, really excited to be a customer, just tell you how we got to where we are, and then tell you about some future enhancements. So, um, so I think in the, in the keynote this morning, we talked about continuous improvement. So that's, that's, that's kind of our, our viewpoint and our motto as well. So we're, we're looking forward to now that we're level set, you know, making additional enhancements, and then we're going to allow some time for questions at the end. All right, so a little bit about Eversource. Um, I think as Rose mentioned, we're a Fortune 500 company. We are the largest utility or energy company in New England. We're one of the 10 largest in the United States. Uh, Eversource is focused and real, really uh, committed to safety, reliability, very strong focus on environmental leadership and stewardship. Uh, with heavy investments in solar, in wind, in battery storage. And when I, when I mention battery storage, it's not kind of like a little thing. It's like, you know, one of our recent projects is battery storage to supply energy to the island of Martha's Vineyard. So, so, um, so we've, we've got a really strong focus and are, are, are really a leader there, um, you know, and, and really based on providing good service for our four million electric, gas, and water customers. So you can see the map to the right of the screen, and that's our territory, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut. And I think if folks, uh, folks probably recognize the city in the background or may recognize the city in the background, so that's Boston, Massachusetts. We are duly headquartered in Boston, Mass, and in Hartford, Connecticut, so that's the image that you're gonna see behind the screen. Uh, and then just a little bit about, um, you know, about recognitions for our, for our company. Uh, we were recently named on Newsweek's list of most responsible companies. Uh, we've been noted in the CNBC Just Capital list as um, in the ranking of most responsibly public, tr publicly traded companies and also a recent recognition in Bloomberg for Gender Equality Index. So we take a lot of, a lot of pride in our company. All right, so moving on to our corporate goal and strategy approach. So how do we run our company? What, how do we decide on our initiatives? And, um, and how do we measure, most importantly, how do we measure against them? And that's where DI is gonna come in for us. So over to the right, you're gonna see our mission statement. We consider ourselves one of the best, if not the best, energy company uh, in, in the United States. We have a very aggressive goal to be carbon neutral by 2030. That is very aggressive in the energy industry with many of our competitors uh, focusing on reaching that goal by 2040 or 2050. You'll see our key focus areas in those blue boxes. So customer is a key focus. We wanna be very easy to, be, to do business with, provide great customer service. Employee, having a diverse, empowered, engaged uh, workforce. Clean energy, I've talked about that a little bit, really strong focus on clean energy and being a leader in that space. Uh, community, leading partnerships in the communities that we serve, a lot of charitable events and that type of thing. And then you're also gonna see kind of in the, in the bottom green boxes, strong focus on financial, being a top tier financial organization. Reliability, again, we're an energy company, so reliability is very important and very key to us. Um, all right, so we talked about the mission, mission statement, and in terms of helping us get to those goals, Eversource has a very robust process to, to define uh, our objectives and to measure performance against those goals. And that really is where DI comes in, or Dimensional Insight comes in, 
and it helps us calculate some of those, some of those metrics and, and do that reporting to our senior executives. So you'll see on that last note, um, you know, continuous monitoring. So we are, we are developing scorecards. We are, we are defining metrics to measure ourselves by. Uh, we are communicating that to our senior management. And just to give you an idea of the scope, um, our executive level scorecards, there are 17 of those. We have 28 key performance indicators across all of those, all of those scorecards. We have um, another set down, kind of lower level scorecards, a little bit more detailed and deeper in the organization. There are 22 scorecards there and three, about 320 additional KPIs. And we are gonna be showing you some examples of our scorecards further in the presentation and just show you the improvements that we've had in presenting those scorecards and communicating those key indicators to our executive management. All right, so a little bit about our journey with, with DI. And as I mentioned, we went live in January of this year. Um, a primary objective, we had an older, older software platform. It was aging, end of support. We didn't want to invest any more money in it. Um, and really, we were looking for a newer and more modern tool that would allow us to, um, that would allow us to bring some new capabilities and new efficiencies to our process. So, so things that were very key to us in that was the ability to have a very strong calculation engine, which DI absolutely did. Uh, we were looking to streamline, enhance our reporting, um, enhance kind of the way that we presented this data to folks. Um, also have a very strong integration tool. Another key objective was to act as a central repository for all of our performance metric information. And that was important to us because in our old tool, it had so many limitations that we, we were heavily relying on Excel. So, and we had maybe half of our metrics were in our old system, the other half were really in Excel, and a lot of the calculations happened there, and frankly, our entire reporting process for scorecards was Excel. And we are gonna show you an example of kind of a before and after, so you can see the benefit uh, that we got from that. So being Excel-based, you know, we were really looking to automate a number of the manual tasks that Excel brought to us, adding overall efficiency to our business process and, um, and you know, really providing that through a more engaging presentation layer and making it a kind of updated modern interface for our, for our core users in the performance management group and also you know, perhaps as a future enhancement, making this available to business users as well. And I think the overall goal is the one on the bottom right, which is leveraging this new, new technology to enhance some of the business insight, because that's what it's really all about, you know, putting the right information in the hands of our executives and leaders to be able to make those key business decisions and, um, and allow us to meet our strategic goals. All right, so moving on to our selection process and timeline, so a very rigorous selection process. So uh, it took place over several years, um, which will come probably as, as no surprise to the folks we worked with at DI that we were very organized and, um, and, um, and really went in depth. Uh, so we, we actually started out evaluating about 30 or so vendors. We then narrowed that list to six vendors that we evaluated through the RFI process and then narrowed that again to four vendors in the RFP uh, process. Dimensional Insight was uh, really rose to the top and was the clear winner in that process, in that very rigorous process. And what, some of the things that we liked about DI were the strong calculation engine. So that checked the box for kind of a main objective that we had. Also its reporting capabilities, which we're still trying to figure out how to leverage. Uh, it's robust system interface, ETL capabilities, very important to us, having that versatile calculation engine. We also did our due diligence in terms of you know, comparisons amongst other vendors, and it was highly rated by Gartner, so that was another key point. And, and I'm also gonna say perhaps the most important point is the last, which is the responsive and customer-focused team. 
So we had several customer references uh, with DI customers and really a very common theme was how great the team was to work with, how customer focused they were, how much they really supported the customer. And I was interested to hear in the keynote this morning um, that um, from Fred and Stan that that is something you consider a competitive advantage. And I have to say, you know, that's been certainly our experience, and that really was a key point in our in our selection process. Um, and and I do want to and I do just want to thank and 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 note uh, Julie Lamoureux and. Uh, Dan Jablowski for their tireless efforts in supporting us and helping us, you know, through through our implementation. So, so really, the team was was just great to work with. Uh, in terms of challenges, so nothing nothing is perfect. So we're we're quite happy with our implementation. But in terms of challenges, uh, we you know we're we're, we're going to kindly say that we push the envelope a little bit. So I think our implementation, our business is a little bit different from the beverage industry or the, or the medical industry. So we, we did push DI to develop with us a very highly customized solution. And we're gonna talk about a little bit further along. Joe is gonna run through some of those customizations. Um, also noting on the slide, commentary capability. So that's something that I don't think many of the customers, um, you know, and many of your normal customers do, but uh, that's something that is important to us as we have those executive scorecards and we're having numbers, we're having color ratings, but we also need to have on our scorecard and on our page commentary. And what's the reason for the metric being where it is? Where is it going? So that's a, a really key part of our process. And, um, and so, so that's something we've worked closely with DI on and I think we're in a, we're in a good spot, but we, we are still having a little bit of difficulty with the refresh cadence and that our user community is looking for a really, a, a really real time update. So if you type something in the system, you know, maybe not waiting for Measure Factory to run or for someone to run a process, but be able to see that real time. So that's something that we are speaking, uh, speaking with the developers about. Um, and, and also a challenge is before, I think I mentioned it was all Excel based. So you can do anything you want in Excel, right? You can change a format, you can change a number, you can input something and you're gonna see it live. So that's something that we faced with our user community that um, you know, folks mix, miss that flexibility. So that's a little challenge and a, a little change management challenge we have with our users, but we're, you know, we're certainly, certainly getting there. Um, and, and really just a key point is that it really was the collaborative approach uh, with Dimensional Insight that led us to problem solve some of these issues and challenges and we're continuing that strong partnership and relationship. So I think I mentioned we implemented uh, during 2021. We went live in January 2022. One of our first items was a new scorecard design and we, we're gonna show that we're gonna show that to you in a moment. Oh, pardon me. All right, and I am now gonna turn it over to Joe Canina to talk to us a little bit about data structure and a little bit more of the specifics. Okay, uh, huh? I'll make, thank oh, you, Fran. Pardon me. Um, I also wanna echo Fran's remarks about Dan and Julie. They were very instrumental in getting us where we are and uh, we've basically been with each other now pretty much night and day for the last year and a half. Uh, in weekends, it's been, it's been a challenge, but it's mm -hmm. been, I think overall it's been fun and we have a couple of coworkers that I wanted to drag into the project and they're here as well, Marie Tobio and Tom Bohm. Uh, they wanted to meet some of you in person, which was good. Um, Fran mentioned that there were a lot of challenges and uh, if I'm not, I, I think maybe Dan didn't have anybody here when this started and, and now we might have a few more. So, <laughs> um, so what makes us different uh, from most, basically I think most of you, if not all of you, is that right now we don't have any transactional data in the system. Uh, our main product is an executive uh, performance scorecard package, which is essentially a thick PDF file. So we're really into the you know, 1970s, 1980s in terms of what our executives want to look at. They want paper. Uh, they don't mind browsing it online, but that's, that's the package that we produce. And 
I'll show you a little bit, of, uh, we'll go into that as well. As Fran mentioned too, we do a lot, we do everything with Excel. And now we're doing a lot with Power BI. And Power BI is taking over a lot. Some people wanted something more than Excel, they're doing that. Um, the way we collect data is much different. A lot of our data is just manually collected from the users. Somebody from a customer group may just give us an aggregated data for the month, the data point. They put it in Excel, it becomes part of another measure that they show. In Excel, they could put the commentary in themselves. They'd work with the consultants. And a little bit about our group too, it's a performance management group of analysts, consultants, and then system support is what we do. Uh, that group works ex uh, directly with the executives of the company. So they're working with the VPs, senior VPs, president of the company, to produce this package and to write the commentary. So that was a big piece of what we needed. Uh, and we did get it. <laughs> uh, so Excel updates were what we did. Uh, when we switched over, we did not go the Excel route. We started looking at that and we found just for speed of conversion, we took all the Excel files that we had and we just added macros to them to create the same formatted text files. So that's what we upload. That's pretty much all of our data. For the big reporting items that we have, safety and reliability, we basically, we do get transactions, but that's aggregated before it comes in. Uh, and again, for the speed of conversion, we did not work on the, the transaction parts. That's our next phase for bringing it in. So we bring that into Excel, convert it. Then we also have online input screens, which Dan has made uh, for us. In our process flow, we, during the two-week period, we schedule the factory refresh and the data refreshes every hour from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. for two weeks because consultants are meeting with VPs and et cetera. They, they get a new piece of data, they want to enter it right then, refresh, and get a scorecard right then and be able to show the executive what they're seeing. So that was a little bit of a setback for us in terms of the consultant being empowered. They could control everything with Excel and when they produced it, when they put data in. And so that's part of the adoption issue that we have uh, with them. So, when, so what we are using now, when we do that sweep, we have more people using DivePort. Tom has done a lot of development in DivePort, producing scorecards and PDF. Julie was instrumental in getting us started with the original scorecards, and then we were able to, to tweak that. We do some graphs and detail reports. Um, we also are now using, creating ODBC files, and we're looking forward to 7.2 because we have a lot of people who want to bring those ED, ODBC into Excel and Power BI. Eventually, we want people using DI for their visuals, but right now, they have things built in Excel, they have things built in Power BI, so that's what they want to use. And I think this, so a big effort this year was commentary. Again, Dan created an input screen for us. Uh, in the top left, uh, you'll see the actual input screen. So we can select the location level, the month, the measure, and we can put in that an override on the actual value or the target. You say, why do you want to do that? Well, again, sometimes we need to get data in before we get data coming out of a system. So we'll put it in there, manually override what's calculated in the system. Uh, about halfway through the year, we start producing a projected year-end rating, and we just put a color in so that when we produce the scorecard, the executives can see what they think it's gonna look like at the end of the year. And that can continue to change, obviously. Uh, and the bottom right is when you click on that measure, that's what you have for the input screen. Uh, we still have a challenge out to the end about making that area for the comments a little bit bigger so you can see the whole thing, but you know, we're, we're working on that. <laughs> uh, so this is the old version that we had 
in Excel. You know, it looks like an Excel worksheet. Uh, and people could enter their comments in there the way it is to measure actual uh, target, the color rating for the year, and then the commentary. What's important for the executives with this scorecard is to tell a story about where they are, as Fran mentioned. And the commentary plays a big role in this. There's no sense in us producing a scorecard without the commentary, because it literally is a scorecard. And you know, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Well, <laughs> that's what they do here. Um, we also have on here uh, a micro trend that was developed in Excel. And we're working on that with DI now to get that capability so that we can put it on our scorecards. Uh, it's a spark chart feature, but what we want is to be able to have color. So we can see up or down, you know, just two colors right now that we're asking for. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Uh, so that's where we're at now, or that's where we were. And to make it more friendly for the people who use it in our department, we, we when I say we a lot of times, I mean Tom, uh, de <laughs> developed uh, tiles uh, for their, the interface, the landing page. So you can go to these landing pages and you can click on one of these and you'll go into the scorecard page that they're gonna see. And I'll bring you to the, the new scorecard. So this is what we've done to replace Excel. The one drawback on it is we have more pages than we did in Excel because of the real estate, people could compress things, change the size of things. But, and, and that's met with some 50-50. Some people like the Excel format, some people like this. And this allows you to focus on each measure individually. Uh, we do have a mock-up showing the micro-trend that's not in there right now. Um, and we do, obviously we have the commentary and, and that's what we're presenting now. And a lot of people do like it, so, and, and it may change next year. So just make a note of that, Julie. Good. <laughs> uh, so this is an expanded uh, version of the stamp that we use just to give you a, a better visual of it. And you can see we have a PYE rating. That's a manually entered rating. Um, this one is a green underline, uh, has an underline on it. That's, a, uh, that's something that we actually had fixed uh, since then. So we've been working with DI to make sure that their visual PDF <laughs> matches what we're seeing on the screen. Uh, and it sounds, uh, like I said, it's 1980s, but you know, what we really wanted the what you see is what you get when you're looking at the screen. And there's some differences in the PDF. When you do a print a PDF, it doesn't always come out the way you see it. So we've been tweaking that a little bit. Um, did I go too far? So some of the graphics that we have developed and we'll be start using, you see the top left, you know, board, board metrics, which, uh, board of trustees. And again, along that side, we are able to see the comments, the measure name, the comments that we have with it. So somebody looking at those measures, and again, geared toward the executive, not the analyst, uh, they can see the story that's associated with it. So uh, future enhancements and next steps, and as I said, you know, we're, we're all about continuous improvement, and I think, you know, over the past nine months or so, you know, we have a good basis. We've made a lot of improvements in our presentation and our calculations, and, but things that we're focused on really for the future is a higher level of customization for some of the graphics. Uh, Joe talked about the micro trend and, you know, things that, you know, we, we certainly want to get away from Excel, but we want to be able to re reproduce some of, um, some of those, those features and make it a little bit more Excel-like. So control over the line, the bulk color, color bars, the microtrends, et cetera. More real-time updates, I think I mentioned that in the commentary. That is something that, would, uh, that is very important to our user community to be able to update data, to be able to update commentary and really see that in real time. So that's really a focus for us. And I think uh, DI is certainly going to support us in that. Um, in addition to that, Joe talked about leveraging the transaction data. So transactional data, right now it's all summary data. 
but, uh, but that is absolutely on our plate for phase two to bring in particularly some of that reliability data, safety data, very critical for, for our industry. Uh, in addition to that, increasing our corporate performance management team's development. And uh, we've, we've, we've kind of referred to, to Tom a bit here, and, and Tom has really developed a lot of great, uh, great product for us. But we're looking to expand that and to, um, and, to, and to give that capability or that knowledge to more users to be able to do that development. Um, and in addition to that, you know, really just becoming more self-sufficient, Workbench Spectre, more, more self-sufficient overall uh, with, with the software and, and looking forward to 7.2. I, I think that those features look really exciting, so we're definitely, definitely really excited about that. Um, let's see, so I guess in summary, it's been a great journey with Dimensional Insight. It's been a successful implementation from our standpoint. We've achieved all of the goals that we set out in one of those first slides in that we now have a strong calculation engine, a central data repository, improved reporting and graphics, and, and really a very valued and strong partnership with the Dimensional Insight team. So looking forward to continuing to improve our processes and, and how we're using the product and um, you know, with the objective to support a lot of these key business processes at our company. And so with that, I'm just gonna say thank you. And uh, I think we're gonna open it up to questions. You'll I, see. I do wanna make one oh, point. Oh yeah, certainly. Just, we were very thorough with our vendor research. And it really, the four came down to two, maybe three. And those other two, they did what we wanted, but the real tipping point in is the working with the, with the company. We definitely felt it was a partnership throughout the whole RFP process, and it's been the same ever since. So, you know, Fran and, uh, not Fran, <laughs> Stan uh, and Fred, you've done a great job of putting that culture in the company. It really comes through. It makes a difference. Stay here to take some questions. All right. and I'm Thank I'll you, Francis here. and Joseph. Um, uh, we have time for one, maybe two questions. Um, any questions? Yeah. So you were talking about all the metrics that you're using. All right, so we can get into the specific types of metrics that you're using. So you're tracking shortages on response time. What kind of metrics are you following within that? They're really all types of metrics. Mm -hmm. They're reliability metrics. Um, Months, months in between outages. Mm -hmm. uh, they're operational metrics, they're employee metrics. How many, um, you know, how many employees are in our key talent program? How many diverse employees are we hiring? Uh, customer metrics, customer satisfaction. Uh, they really touch on, on every organization within the company. And Joe, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that you know, in terms of examples of... Um, well, you mentioned the, uh, what we call MBI, month, months between interruptions, which is essentially saying, what will the average, uh, how many months will it be for the average customer to experience an outage? So we set that to be, you know, high. I don't know what our current target is. Right now, I, I think it's 20, 20 months, around there. And it's different for each state because it's different infrastructures in place for in each state. So that would be one example on the reliability side. How do you measure you know, that simple metric? Yeah, um, and also financial metrics. I mean, really, really every aspect of the company. Um, so so there's, there's a number of them, you know, you know right. that's for sure. Motor vehicle accidents versus to measure our safety, that, that type of thing. Yep. So. Safety and reliability in employees, I think, the big, the big Are the ones. really big ones, yep. Exactly. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Any Fred, questions, you know, Joseph? out there? Just yeah, yeah we know, do have our contact info, us, so, so, yeah. so feel, feel free. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much.